Advance drunk. The Game Boy Advance has one of the strangest game libraries out there. There's at least 10 or 12 games that'll make you say, wait, that exists? I've covered a few of them on this channel, like Tony Hawk 2 and Max Payne, and there's plenty more to get to, like Tomb Raider, Oddworld, Tekken. Yes, those do exist on Game Boy Advance. But for now, let's do a quick rundown of Pinball of the Dead, a horror-themed pinball game made by Sega AM1, released in June 2002. So I would have been 20 years old when this first came out, and to be completely honest, I would have snarkily dismissed this game at the time had I known it existed, I would have perceived it as a cheap, lazy cash-in benefiting from a successful franchise. Fast forward to now, I'm 42 years old, and after playing this one, my opinion has shifted to, heck yeah, get all that cash. Pinball of the Dead is a true pick-up-and-play portable game, made back when there was more of an emphasis on that for handheld games, so there's not a lot to dive into here. You just have three different tables with a battery save for your high scores, and a password system for the bosses, and there's a structure here similar to other pinball games like this, namely Jackie Crush and Devil's Crush. Each table has at least three sets of flippers, or three levels, and while you can just play each table individually for a high score, there's also a challenge mode where you can quote-unquote beat a table after reaching the boss room and defeating him, with the game featuring six different bosses all taken from House of the Dead 2. And yeah, as you can see here, this game uses the visuals and lore from House of the Dead 2. What I really like though is that there's so many different enemy types. It's not just the same three or four zombie sprites. There's skeletons, ghouls, a bunch of different bosses, you got a giant zombie head that pops up. This table has hands for flippers and chainsaws for bumpers. It's clear that the dev team had a ton of fun with this one. And it's fun to play, too. The pinball physics are pretty solid. The L and R buttons control the flippers while everything else nudges the table. And this one's pretty forgiving. You're not likely to tilt too often, which is nice. I know at a glance this game might look kind of bleary and the colors are just a wee bit loud, but they kind of have to be. You need heavy contrast for a small Game Boy Advance screen, so it's understandable. My only real nitpick is that the ball can be a bit floaty, where it's almost like it's moving in slow motion, but hey, that's better than it moving too fast to keep up with. Plus, there's also an option to adjust the ball speed to your liking, which is nice. The camera viewpoint is steady, the ball bounces consistently, and it's not too tough to get a feel for aiming, so you can collect all the typical pinball bonuses. Like here, you can earn an extra ball if you keep hitting this area, which will spell out escape, and this giant head will pop up and offer some easy bonus points. That's just one small example, each table has a bunch of different things to unlock and events you can play through. Like save the civilians, you hit all the letters to spell out chaos, then help civilians cross the board from one point to another while protecting them from an oncoming horde of zombies. There's a surprising amount of stuff you can unlock, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I know spooky season has come and gone, but I haven't been able to stop playing Pinball of the Dead. Sure, it can be a frustrating game sometimes, same as any other pinball game, but the gameplay is consistent enough and reliable enough to keep coming back to. And hey, if you're gonna make a pinball video game, then you might as well go all out with all sorts of stuff you can't do on real pinball tables. Although, man, can you imagine if these could be real tables somehow? Oh, I guess if that were possible, all the blood, guts, and gore would mean you'd need to include a Cleaning of the Dead minigame. But hey, I'd play that too. This is a surprisingly fun and entertaining game, and since it wasn't released anywhere other than Game Boy Advance, this is another game where you're gonna have to play it any way you can. And that is all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.